God. How many of y'all know you're in the burn? Well, see, you got to remember the song we just sang, right? The crushing. That's the burn, isn't it? See, so when you're in the burn, you should come out with more fire. Does everybody get it? See, the burn is to destroy everything that is interfering with God's character to be released through you and me. And it's also to restore things. Because there's been a lot of areas where people become complacent, compromising, comfortable, amen, lazy, whatever it might be. And these things God is exposing. Areas where people are touching unclean things. All of these things are going to burn. But remember, the purpose is to bring us through this burn to bless us and prosper us. And also the area to where we carry a fresh new fire that God wants to release from heaven. Old things are passing away and all things are becoming new. In every area. I mean every area. The world is a shaking and a quaking. The world is burning. It's in the burn right now. There are things happening that people have no control of finally. Hallelujah. So that's a place where we've got to come to a full surrender and trust in the Lord. In every area. One of the things that burn us to do is cause us to grow. Everyone say grow. So there's an area in the burn where we're going to come to where we are going to begin to reach beyond yourself. Reaching beyond yourself. Hello. Deuteronomy 28. In verse 1. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently, diligently. You know, the word of diligently, I always like it is it consistently also. You're diligent. Amen. If you consistently obey the voice of the Lord your God. To observe carefully all his commandments. Now, his, how many know every one of his words is a command? Amen. Anything he speaks is a command. It's a law. Which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground and the increase of of your herds at the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks verse 5 blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face now how many would like that when there's got to be a consistency of hearing God's voice and obeying it. See, you may hear it, but don't obey it. Amen? They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Verse 8. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he swore to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of you. Let me tell you, this is coming. This is what's going on. As we're going through the burn and the world's going through the burn, the world is going, the people in the world are running back to the world. Some of them are running to the Lord. There will be an area where they're going to, and that word be afraid means reverence. 
It doesn't mean that they're going to fear you. They're going to fear God in you. But there's something we got to do. Obey the voice of the Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? All right. Let's grow a little further. Um, verse 11. The Lord will grant you plenty of goods and the fruit of your body and the increase of your livestock and the produce of your ground and the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure. In other words, you'll have access to heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. You shall be above only and not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes which I command you today that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. And we don't need to go through all of the curses. In other words, you, if someone's not going to willing to obey, they're going to miss all the blessings. Amen? But they will be cursed. So the law of the voice of God is a law. It's a law of obedience. He, it is to reward. God wants to reward his people by obedience. Now, God rewards by obedience. The devil rewards by disobedience. Why? Because then he has access. His demons have access to influence us. Amen? Remember, when there's a curse, there's a legal right. The devils have legal right to access you. Living from heaven is vital. And that's what he's saying. He says, look it, we need to live from heaven. We need to live from heaven's future, not the earthly past. Why? So that we can increase and grow. That is reaching beyond yourself. We're to be reaching beyond ourselves. See, that's what the word deny yourself is it's reaching beyond yourself you're not relying on you you're finally coming to the end of you and that takes a daily thing now you may be coming to the end of you in one thing but not something else he wants it all things are about to change i don't know if you saw the red moon the other night was it last night or huh it was raining there was a red moon the other night. Anyways, I saw it right out my back window. Philippians 3. Reaching beyond yourself. What is that? That's growth and increase. Prospering. You're reaching beyond yourself. You're grabbing hold of heaven. Not earthly. Everything you're grabbing hold of is heaven. It's promises, covenant, everything. Verse 7. Let's speak it. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And count them as what? Rubbish that I may gain Christ. And be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I do what? I press on. In other words, I'm reaching beyond myself. I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me of my past and reaching forward to those things 
which are ahead, moving and reaching beyond myself. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God and Jesus Christ. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. All powerful. Forgetting the past, reaching for beyond yourself. Again, we are grabbing hold of heaven now. We're grabbing hold of his promises. We're not grabbing hold of the things associated with ourself. People get so entangled in the affairs of this life. Everything is out of order. Listen, when that's what the burn is doing. It's bringing things in divine order. Jeremiah 17. <laughs> One of the things the Lord always searches is Are you going to still worship him when everything's going wrong? Hello. Are you going to still praise him when things aren't going your way? You know what he's doing? He's checking your genuineness. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Let's speak it. Thus says the Lord, curses the man who trusts in him. Amen. That person is not reaching beyond himself, are they? And makes flesh his strength. Whose heart departs from the Lord. He shall be like a shrub in the desert. That's pretty dry. And shall not see when good comes. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness. In a salt land. Which is not inhabited. Wow. See. The cursed are held back. There's open doors of demons of influence. They can't reach beyond themselves and they miss many opportunities. Many. Verse 7. But blessed is the man who what? Trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought or any time nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. First Peter chapter 2. You know, sometimes you get to a point where you can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Does everybody understand it? You know, we got to come to the reality that we, are, we can't do anything without him. And anything that we do in the flesh, there's no reward of. Amen? It just opens the door to the enemy. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. I believe so. Let's read it. Therefore, laying aside what? All malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, all evil speaking. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may what? That you may grow. Therefore, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Everyone say, I'm chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the Scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. What's the word believe mean? Follow. Therefore, to you who believe, he's precious, but to those who are disobedient, to the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, they stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. 
who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. And they had obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I but beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Have your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Awesome. Growth is reaching beyond yourself. You can't grow unless you begin to reach beyond yourself. Ephesians 4. Reaching beyond yourself is denying yourself. Ephesians 4.11. Everybody there? Let's speak it. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, which is the anointing, that we should no longer be what? Children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up, may what? Grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes what? Growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, that you should no longer walk as you used to walk in the world. In the, fullness, in the fertility of your thoughts and minds, having your understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance and blindness that is in them, because of their blindness of their heart who being past feeling, having given themselves over to lewdness, to work of uncleanness and greediness, but you've not so learned Christ. Wow. Not learned, grown in the Christ, reaching because they've never got to a point where they're not able to reach beyond themselves. Their selves are always priority to them. Does everybody get this? Third John. You know, people have a hard time worshiping because they can't get their eyes off their cells. Amen? So they have a hard time worshiping. Uh, verse 2. Third John, verse 2. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Beloved, I pray that you may what? Prosper. Is prosper associated with growth? How about increase? Amen. You, that you may prosper in all things. And be in health just as your soul prospers. So your soul, you must reach beyond yourself so that your soul aligns with the word of God. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. The soul grows in the unity of the spirit of God. And the ability to reach beyond yourself begins to fall into place. You know why? Because you're not so concerned about yourself, how you, how you used to be. You're more concerned about kingdom business instead of your business. Amen? Why? Because, you know, that's the same thing. When you're more concerned about kingdom business, then the word says, seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be what? Added to you. So when you're more concerned about kingdom business, God begins to move on your other parts of your life to do things. But the moment you begin to 
come back to yourself again, grumble and complain, well, what's taking God so long? Well, no, 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 no. Hello? Then, well, you're not, you're not, you're, then you're not going beyond yourself. You're coming to yourself. We're supposed to be walking away from ourselves every single day, going beyond yourself, being about kingdom business, bringing heaven into the earth. Amen? Living from the future, not from the past. This is constant. This is not a one-time moment. It's how we live our life now. This is what kingdom living is. Glory. Ezekiel 36. Again, some individuals have not reached this. They're still not able to reach beyond themselves. This I speak to their shame. But thank God he's merciful. Amen? How many times have he given us opportunities and another chance? <laughs> and forgives us. He forgives us. He makes a way when a person is truly repentant. Amen? There'll be some chastening for a few days, but praise God. You'll burn through it. <laughs> we all burn through it. Ezekiel 36, 22. Let's speak it. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am what? Hallowed, honored, sanctified. When you come, <laughs> when you're able to go beyond yourself, amen, hallowed in you before their eyes. In other words, you're changed. You're a new creation in Christ. People are like, man, what's the matter with you? Oh, you picked up religion? No. I picked up the truth. And they decided to follow the truth. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I mean, all yourself can be your greatest idol. Amen. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. How is he going to cause you? Conviction. Somebody get it? Conviction. The Holy Spirit's going to lead you. And when there's a disorder, he's going to convict and then what's going to happen after conviction comes? There's shame. Look, at shame is not a bad thing. Does everybody understand? Shame is an area where don't let it overtake you. But shame means, man, I've done something wrong before God. I feel terrible. There's shame there. Amen? That shame should turn things around. He said, then you shall, verse 28, then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your what? I will be your God. I will deliver you from all your uncleanness and I will call for the grain and what? Multiply it and bring no famine upon you. Hello. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase of your fields so that you need never again bear reproach of famine among the nations. Does everybody get it? Look at the next verse. Then he says, you're going to remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good. And you will loaf yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and your abominations. That means shame. You will sense shame. My gosh, I can't believe these things and towards such a good God and a good father. Amen. I don't want to do those things again. And the Holy Spirit guides us. Now listen, after there's, remember the Lord says he chases those he loves. Amen. 
So after there's chastening, there's conviction and so forth. He brings you into a place. Well, because all of this has brought us to a true repentance. So we can start over again. So we can start a brand new. See that word, a new creation of Christ, <laughs> isn't a one-time event. It's constant. Amen. It's constant. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 14. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in the anointing. It's taken away where? In the anointing. Christ is the anointed one. That's why some people who accept Jesus Christ as Savior are still partially veiled until they come into the fullness of Christ in that area of the anointing, which removes the scales. Verse 15. How many of y'all know the devil can put scales back on? Oh, yeah. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the what? Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? There's freedom, liberty. So, only where the Spirit of the Lord is, is there freedom. So if you're shutting out the Holy Spirit from certain areas of your life, there's not freedom there, is there? Amen? Only where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom comes by the presence of God. Amen? The anointing that breaks yokes. Colossians, verse 2. So that's why we want to keep going in the area where we're reaching beyond ourselves because when I constantly live a life of denying oneself so that the Holy Spirit has access everywhere and the anointing breaks every yoke of bondage. Colossians 2, verse 18. Let's speak it. Let no one cheat you of your what? Your reward. Taking delight in false humility and worship of angels. Intruding into those things which he has not seen. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And not holding fast to the head. From whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments. Does what? Grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world. Why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and the doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not what? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Now, are you going to be able to do the will of God if you cannot reach beyond yourself? Little children, it is the last hour. <clears throat> and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For they had been of us, they would continue with us. But they went out that they might be made what? Manifest. And that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. He's saying, don't follow the world's ways of life. There is not, there, there is not, they do not have the ability to deny themselves. And they live for self and not for Christ. Amen. 
so they don't grow in the things of God, they grow in the things of the world. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. That means grow more and more. <clears throat> Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Your sanctification, your set apart. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess control his own vessel and sanctification and honor and fear of the Lord. Not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Let no one, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us the Holy Spirit. Well, possessing their own temples in sanctification and honor to their Creator, in which they will give answers to. No one escapes the accountability to God. This is the purpose of reaching beyond yourself, it is to deny yourself in everything that we do to bring glory to God. You know, I, I see so many times in areas, it's like pulling back your own will. Pulling back your own will. You're actually taking your will away from God because you've surrendered your will. So you're taking your will, you you're surrender your will to God, but then people begin to take it back. And as they begin to take it back, they're no longer living beyond themselves. They're living for themselves. Is everybody Okay. Psalm 19. These are the ploys of the enemy. He doesn't stop, you know. <laughs> and he doesn't warn you when he's going to attack. Everything starts off with a little leaven. It's a whisper. A little seed. And if you don't catch it, it'll begin to bear fruit. Psalm 19. Then that whisper turns into a loud voice. Verse 7, Psalm 19, 7. Let's speak it. The law of the Lord is what? perfect at converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. And in keeping them, there is what? There is what? Great reward. Who can understand his ears? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from what? Presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, my focus, be accepted in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In other words, keep the words of Christ living in you. Keep them activated. Because his words will cause you to reach beyond yourself. Of course, he says, and there's warnings, isn't there? Amen. God is trying to release his rewards to his children. As we begin to grow and increase. You know, you, sometimes you have to, I don't want to say catch, but sometimes the rewards come that you got to catch hold of. Does everybody get it? Um, 
It's just like the anointing. Sometimes you've got to catch the anointing. You've got to grasp the anointing. And, and in this, if we're not paying attention and we're distracted, we miss many things. And that's what the enemy loves to do. He loves to bring distraction. Then I close at Colossians 3. And the reason why he does it is because a person can't reach beyond themselves. And reaching beyond ourselves is not a, at a concept. It's just not a one-time thing. But it's every decision that you and I make. Colossians 3.1. Reaching beyond yourself. But speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those what? Things that which are above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts, set your mind, set your desires in the things of above, not in the things of the earth. This is where we're grabbing hold of eternity. Amen. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So, if you die, if you don't die, in other words, he's not talking physically, it means coming to the end of yourself. I die, you died to yourself. Then your life is in Christ. But the moment you begin to pull your life back, you begin to pull everything back. You're not able to live beyond yourself anymore. And you're living for yourself. You're no longer living in Christ. Amen. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But you... But now you yourselves are to put off these things like anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free. But Christ is all in all. Therefore as the elect of God Holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you, what? Richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do all things in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through God Almighty. Amen. Praise be to God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you continue to guide us and protect us and empower us with the anointing that we may live a life of reaching beyond ourselves into the heavenlies. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.